Hello, this is Help Me Out videos with uh, some diagnosis on this GE Stand Up Upright Freezer. In this particular case, the freezer has been running too much in my opinion. The temperature gets too cold inside even when I'm using the warmest setting, which is setting number one. Um, normally over the years, this one's about 10 years old, I would run this freezer at about level three or four out of seven and I would um, get a temperature somewhere around zero to minus 10 degrees, but um, even currently it's running colder than that. I'm seeing minus 15, sometimes even minus 20, um, and it doesn't seem to matter what setting I use. So, um, this video is about how to test the thermistor, which is one of the few parts that could be causing the problem. Um, I'm going to do just a quick overview on how to diagnose the the problem of the freezer running too much. Uh, it won't take, I won't get into details and I will share some links to other resources and of course you can Google your own videos uh, for those other parts and how to troubleshoot them. But this one is specifically on testing the thermistor because it's something that I discovered was quite simple uh, if you know the trick. Um, but first, quick trouble, quick uh, overview. If it's running too much, there could be a number of issues um, one would be the, the check the evaporator coil to, to make sure that uh, the defrost coil, that it's, that it's actually defrosting. And that's simple, just uh, it's going to be in, inside the cabinet, on the, typically on this unit. It's at the bottom, all the way in the back. And uh, you should be able to see, if you pull out the bottom drawer of food, you should be able to see um, a hole where the drain hole is, and it should not be frosted over. If you see that it's frosted over, or if you remove the cabinet cover and it's full of frost, uh, then you know that your defrost coil isn't working, and you'll potentially need to replace that. And you can you can search for other videos on that. The second problem might be the uh, defrost thermostat, and it's interesting because the defrost thermostat, you would think that um, it either works or it doesn't, but that may not be the case. It's possible that the defrost thermostat is not um, opening the circuit at the correct temperature. It may be opening the circuit at a much colder temperature than it should. So uh, testing the defrost thermostat correctly is, uh, is important as well, and I can share a link to that below. A third part that could go bad is the thermistor, and the reason I want to share this is because checking those other two may require quite some work, pulling food and drawers out of the freezer and then um, opening up the back cover takes a little bit of time and effort whereas checking the thermistor can be quite simple and uh, I'll get to that in just a second the last thing unfortunately is the control panel itself and uh, that's the, probably the most expensive part out of all of these so I would um, uh, try to troubleshoot all the other parts first before checking the, the uh, control panel okay enough time on that how to check test the thermistor. The thermistor's job is to notify the unit when the temperature um, inside the, the defrost area reaches a certain um, point so that it can essentially shut off the compressor and stop cooling. Um, so it's possible that the compressor just keeps on cooling uh, because it's not getting the right signal from the thermistor. That can be tested by comparing the, um, the ohm rating by, by um, checking the resistance across the two points on the thermistor and evaluating that ohm rating to make sure that uh, it's, at, it's in the appropriate range, which is essentially a temperature reading on the freezer. Now, before we do anything, of course, we have to unplug the freezer. So we're going to do that now because we do not want to put ourselves at risk of electrical shock. And upon unplugging, you should hear the unit shut off and see the control panel, of course, go blank. Now, the next thing is to remove the control panel, but that is very simple. All you need is a very, very uh, flat edge tool that you can just gently pull up on the bottom of the control panel, pop it loose, and then it will come right off. Okay. Now what we're going to do 
is check the first two pins, the resistance across these first two pins, uh, to see if they're in the appropriate range. Now, the uh, typical uh, voltmeter um, comes with pins that you can put into those pinholes, but they're, they're too big, they won't fit. So I had to use paper clips in order to get them to go in there. So I'm gonna set that up and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so it feels a bit flimsy, but I do have paper clips connected to alligator clips that are plugged into my voltmeter. And as you can see, they're pinned into the first two pins on the left here. I believe that's pins one and two, um, which are directly tied to the thermistor which is, uh, again, down in that defrost cabinet way in the bottom back. It's hard to get to. Um, it's one continuous wire. It doesn't tie into anything else. This unit is now measuring about 55, 56 kilo ohms. Uh, that's because it's been turned off for a little while. That tells me it's uh, reporting about, um, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take 5 degrees. Um, when it's um, at minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, it's actually reporting well over 100 kilo ohms. So be careful because other uh, documentation you'll find online, even for GE products, may give you a different table of uh, kilo resistance to temperature. But on testing the thermistor, I just wanted to show you that you can do that pretty quickly uh, without taking anything apart at the bottom. So you can uh, eliminate, you can rule that out, or you can diagnose it as a problem. Uh, if it shows up as one, um, which is essentially infinite measurement, that may mean you have your ohm meter set too low in terms of since it's are too high in sensitivity. Right now it's set on 20K, but obviously with a reading of 50 something K, uh, that's going to be over the scale here. So I opened it up to 200K and then I get the correct reading. Um, so that you wanna be careful about that. But if you, if if by opening it up to 200K and you're still seeing a one, well then the thermistor is reporting, um, clearly the, reporting the wrong temperature and, and that would be a problem. Um, also, if your thermistor is showing a zero, well, that would mean that it's shorted out somewhere. Maybe, maybe your wires are touching here, which could would cause it to report a zero, which is full continuity. Um, or it could mean there's another problem. Either way, you want to um, replace that thermistor if there's a if if it clearly indicates that it's not given the right numbers. Well, I hope this is helpful. Please subscribe and thank you for tuning in to help me out videos. Goodbye.